Hello and welcome back to this episode of the Law of Relevancy podcast. I'm Cord Zoen. I'm the CEO of Bake More Pies, a full service advertising and marketing agency here in Tampa Bay. And I'm joined today by one of Tampa Bay's brightest and smartest young entrepreneurs, Allie St. Cyr of the Tomlin St. Cyr Real Estate Brokerage. Allie, thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. Well, we're super excited to have you on our podcast here today. I actually got to meet you through a referral when I was selling my home and I was super impressed hearing about all the things that you're doing with your business. I love studying business models and everything else. And I'm just like learning about your story and like what your background was and everything and, and how you've just ex- expanded through your uh, your space and out competing your competitors is just phenomenal. So let's start talking about that just a little bit. So we love to talk about things on the law of relevancy that are happening right now, right? So what are you doing right now in your brokerage to add layers of, uh, of functionality and business to, to what you do for your clients? You know, when we set out to start our brokerage five years ago, we didn't want to just start something that everyone else had. I mean, there are many, many real estate brokerages across the U.S. and in Tampa Bay alone, and we wanted to start something a little bit different. Um, As you know, and and the reason I think you and I get along so well is, you know, ethics is a big uh, part of uh, the people that we recruit and how we run our business. And we really look for people that put their clients' needs first and Mm -hmm. work on a referral-based business so that there are agents that really are in this business for the long term. Um, Also, another thing I know that uh, we've talked about quite a bit is our video marketing. And we've we've put a lot of... um, of money and time into building that piece of our business. And I would say that's something that's, um, that's really helped our business grow because, you know, it used to be, you could just write up a pretty story about a house and everyone would read it and said, Oh, how lovely. I'd love to go see it. And then it became photos being the most important. Right but now. I think people won't even click through the photos and take the time to do that. Um, so video has become more and more important in our advertising, mm-hmm. especially in the digital world. Um, you know, when I had first started, it used to be about putting an, an article in a, a newspaper about a home that was up for sale. And, you know, that's out. It's for, forget. Yeah. Uh, that was only five years ago. Eight. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Yeah. yeah we, well, we used to do uh, more print advertising. Yeah. And although print is still a part of our marketing, I would say we put a lot more time and effort into the digital side of things. Um, yeah. And, and video is is something that seems to gain a lot more traction with viewers than any other. Well, I think you get it more than any real estate agents I've ever met ever about how video is important. I mean, you're not only showcasing the home, but you're you're literally telling a story about why somebody might enjoy living there. Mm -hmm. It's an emotional decision and video is able to capture that emotion more than any other medium. You know, it's the the sounds and the music and really trying to bring out the character of the home that you're marketing so that you can bring the right buyer in. And uh, measuring is also a big part of, of figuring out what works. And so a lot of times we will have maybe three marketing strategies going on at once on the mm-hmm. first campaign, see which one works best, and then take the one that, you know, it's a competition, see which one worked best yeah. and put more money behind that. So um but yeah, video, it's, it's fun too. People enjoy watching it and um, it seems to bring a lot more character to the real estate industry. Well, you won't, I won't ask you to go into the secret sauce of what makes your videos better than everyone else's, but I will tell you that um, we really enjoyed the video that you guys put together for, for our home. And, you know, obviously I'm in the video business and I have a lot of respect for what you guys did. You did a phenomenal video. I know that made me video. nervous doing the video in front of you. I, I was trying to pick up on what that was. I didn't, I wasn't sure if that was nervousness or what, yeah. but yeah. So, but, but you did a great job Thank and you. now all of my neighbors are using it as like a sizzle reel. For our so neighborhood, flattered hear that. super <laughs> yeah. flattered. I love it. Right. Yeah, you're a you're Let a them keep sharing. You're a star <laughs> in our neighborhood. Are you working with Ali St. Cyr? That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, so that was huge. So video is really big, and that, so that would say that's like a tactic for what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some other things that you're doing? I mean, I think a lot of people who watch the Law of Relevancy understand, you know, on some level, like what real estate agents do. I mean, you're you're out there like marketing a home, you're trying to find buyers or you're trying to find someone who is a buyer, their particular home out there hunting for those things, utilizing your databases and all that. But mm-hmm. 
there's a lot of other layers to the actual real estate transaction that you're diving into, mm-hmm. right? So those layers are, you have obviously your brokerage, mm-hmm. you have agents, you have a title company, you're opening an insurance agency, mm-hmm. and now you're going to do a mortgage mortgage brokerage as well? That, that will be the next step and, and maybe finding the right partner or doing something on our own. That's what we're, we're looking for our next adventure. But That's so, one hell of a vision. Yeah, it's um, what we have found is that sometimes it's difficult. All those pieces are a big part of mm-hmm. creating a good experience for a customer. And we want yeah. to be able to work with people and have partners and you know joint ventures that share the same um, standards of quality service. Sure. And so that's part of the reason why, and it all started with title. And mm-hmm. unfortunately people don't understand you can shop for title services. They yeah. just say, okay, sure. Whatever title company, I don't care who you use. And we were seeing some pretty exorbitant fees charged to our clients that they don't even know about until closing. And at that point you really have no bargaining power <laughs> to try to negotiate those fees down. So we started our title company to be a low cost, high quality service for our clients to shepherd them through the process. And it's been, it's been a great success. And so we're not only now working with the clients that our brokerage brokerage serves, but, you know, getting referrals from banks for refinancing. And it's, it's really starting to grow organically as people start to see what we're capable of. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if this is an example of what you're talking about, and you and I have never talked about this, but I bought a brand new townhome about three years ago. Brand new. No one has ever owned the property before, but the title company made me get title insurance for a home that's never been to opened, or uh, sorry, owned by anyone ever before because someone might come and say that it was there. I, I didn't understand mm-hmm. that. Is that an example of what you're talking about? Um, no, and we still do sell insurance for that as well. Okay. So, um, but the reason that that's important is it's more than just someone being able to come and say, no, that's my land, get out. Yeah. Um, but there could be, you know, are there any liens or encumbrances on the property that for some reason- So if my developer didn't pay a bill. Yeah, that, or, th- or they didn't do something properly. Um, that would be the reason why you would still- Okay, so that was legit. Title. It was, yeah, you didn't get cheated. Yeah. Okay. As far as how, what you were charged, <laughs> I have no idea. All right. um, well, and usually a builder works with their own in-house title company and yeah. it's a great profit center for them. So, yeah. um, and also with new construction, they have you pay for- The floor mats of the, of the real estate industry. <laughs> Whatever you want to call them. <laughs> An undercoat, dealer fee. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. yeah, lots of fees are what we call them uh, junk fees that are just added on, yeah. you know, processing fee or, you know, yeah. lots of fun little names that they stick in. Yeah. There. And it's so intimidating because you're talking about like people's like life savings. Right. You know, I mean, and it's like you're saying, it's an emotional thing because it's their home. It's their, it's the product of their entire lives of building their own personal wealth. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the, typically the largest transaction of most people's lives. It's their biggest asset. And we take that very seriously. Yeah, I, I believe you. Well, let's 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 talk about that a little bit more. So, I was surprised to know that your agency brokerage has only been around for what I mean. I would think is a short period of time, given the size of your organization. Mm-hmm. But it seems like you're all over the place. Like you know, you're well known in the community and your family and everything. Like, how do you how do you create that kind of an impact in your community? Mm-hmm. You know, it, it all, of course, starts with the people that you start it with and building mm-hmm. a culture that attracts the right people. Yeah. And I, as I had mentioned before, you know, we are very particular in who we allow to be a part of our team because, you know, one bad apple can sour the entire pie and pie. Yeah, no, I like it. <laughs> Keep going. I, and, I like uh, what you're saying. <laughs> good plug. <laughs> Don't stop. Um, but, but it's so true. You know, any anyone who steps in the gray of the gray area is just not a good fit for our organization. People who are not dedicated to developing themselves and staying on top right. of all of the latest things going on in the industry is not a good fit for our company. Like I said, we are handling typically the largest transaction of people's lives and we want to have the most qualified and trained agents 
doing that for our customers. Yeah, and I would say any time that there's an industry where you're doing transactions that are the size of the transactions that you're doing, Mm -hmm. and there's mystery fees and junk fees and Mm -hmm. things like that that could possibly be there. I mean, Mm -hmm. it it seems like, uh, you know, it's regulated by code of ethics, right? Mm -hmm. It is. And so anyone who's a (coughs) member of of the Greater Tampa Realtors Mm -hmm. Association is bound by ethics. That doesn't mean that always happens. And we certainly see, uh, especially in a market like we are today, um, misbehaving realtors, as I would say. Um, But to us, you know, the ones who stay within the boundaries of of the ethics and still maintain ethical practices throughout, they're going to be the ones that end up on top. And a market like this is going to shake those people out. So I always say, you know, no matter what kind of behavior others are choosing, to display that should never hinder you from doing the right thing. Yeah, no, and I I think, you know, just working with you for a short period of time, like I definitely, uh, I believe that 100% about you guys and your team. Um, So let's talk about the market for a second. So obviously the Tampa Bay market is on fire. Is that that the right industry term? Like our market's on fire? It is on fire. (laughs) Yeah, on fire in so many ways. It can be a good thing or a bad thing. (laughs) Right, so it is is absolutely on fire in terms of you, if you're lucky enough to have owned a home and you're in the, you're looking to sell your home, your chances are you're making a nice profit on your property right now, mm-hmm. right? There's a lot of people moving into Florida, into the oh, Tampa yeah. Bay area. It's, it's the greatest well, place the in America. I know, I like the only here. thing we don't have is <laughs> mountains, but we've got an international airport right here. Yeah. We can get to mountains in three yeah, hours, yeah. right? And then you can leave all that cold behind, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So like we do live in the best place in all of America to live, right? I think so. Great place to start an in, uh, an, a real estate agency. Yeah, well, I've lived here right? my whole life, so I'm a little bit biased. But. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I would think starting a real estate brokerage in a place where it's the greatest place in America to live, Mm -hmm. smart decision, very smart. Um, But anyhow, so the market is doing very well right now. Are there, so what, are there any signs that it's going to slow down? Are there any signs that it could potentially, like what would cause a market to like hit the brakes a little bit? Sure. Um, Any substantial increase in the interest rate, of course, Mm -hmm. will decrease someone's buying power if they're financed. We do have a lot of cash buyers out there, but, yeah. but it also makes people a bit nervous and, um, and, and would slow, I would think, the demand. Right now we have such low inventory, so it's, you know, you have a lot of people fighting over the same thing. So that's also right. causing a lot so of interest price rates increase. Because it's the prices are a lot of times predicated off of like what people can afford per month. And like with their financing and things like that? Right. So a significant increase in the interest rate is going to increase your monthly payment. And so sure. so that might um, <clears throat> decrease a buyer's buying power when at one point they were able to afford this, but now the interest w- rate went up and now their price point and budget yeah. has gone down to this. And you're talking about the prime interest rate, right? So the Federal, Federal Reserve prime, like what mm-hmm. they're establishing the interest rate being at, right? Right. Yeah. And we don't see, I mean, we all thought like, how could it not go up? I mean, it's been so low. And my dad likes to remind me that, you know, his first house, he had a 17% interest rate on it. And yeah. so we're all a little spoiled in that we think like 4% is, oh my gosh, how could you ever buy a home at 4%? That is a great interest rate. You know, yeah. you look at the history. That's of, phenomenal interest rate. Right. But we're, we've been used to being in the threes for so long, some dipping in the twos and um, so we're a bit spoiled because it's been like this for so long. Yeah. But at this point, there's no there's no indication that it's going to be jumping significantly. Right. I mean, obviously, there's some inflation worries going on right now. I mean, I see the price of corn is up 40 percent. Lumber is up 600 percent. Um, milk is up 11 percent. I mean, there's gas is up 200 percent. I mean, not 200 percent, sorry, 20 percent. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot of. Uh, you know, consumer goods prices that are going up. So is that what leads to a, an increase in the prime rate? Um, You know, it's all determined by the feds and and how they want to control that. Um, And, you know, at at least I've listened to a lot of very um, well-informed and smart economists that have Mm -hmm. told me all these things that were going to happen. And so far, 
I don't think a single one of them have. So I've just yeah. stopped <clears throat> listening and started, you know, just writing what I see. And if I can feel any Got differences it. in how things are going. So right now you feel good. I feel good, but then also worrisome for buyers in this market. It's a very really challenging tough time. environment. You know, a lot of people say, you know, wow, the real estate market is just fantastic right now. And yes, we are doing really well, but with the inventory being so low, it, I am having to find unique ways to get financed buyers up to the top of, say, 10 to 12 offers on the table for the same house. And yeah. so that I would say is our big challenge right now. Um, and, and right now we have a, a strategy that we're going to be implementing to be able to fully qualify and, uh -huh. and underwrite a buyer before we even make an offer and even being able to waive a contingency on an appraisal. Wow. Which will be able to allow our financed buyers to compete with cash offers rather than just just throw more money at it and hopefully you're that much higher than the cash offer that they accept. Right. Um, and so, so that's a strategy that we're going to start. When is that going to happen? Tomorrow. <laughs> what? Is it yeah, really so tomorrow? Um, I'm working with a, a partner, mortgage partner that's able to do this. Oh, cool. And, and I'm really thinking that's going to be the new path for us and, and our buyers. Cause it's, um, it, that's the biggest challenge that we're facing right now. So how, how, so if someone is now entering the buy, let's say they've, got what, you know, the, the resources or whatever, they're, they're ready to buy their next home, whether they own a home now or they're ready to get into the market for the first time. What's, what do they need to do? Do they need to go ahead and get pre-qualified? Absolutely. We, okay. we always say that's your ticket in the door. Okay. Many sellers are not allowing showings unless you have a pre-qualification letter. Like you don't even get to go to the open house. Well, maybe you can go to the open house. Right. Maybe an open house. They won't but, talk to you. But sometimes <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm required to show a proof yeah. of funds or a pre-qualification letter to just get us in the door. And so if we don't have that done ahead of time, which we do a buyer consult for a mm -hmm. whole hour and go through the entire process, yeah. how do we make this the best experience for you? Yeah. Here's what we have seen and here's what we suggest. Um, and that's part of it. And so we always set them up with a great lender mm -hmm. so that you don't fall in love with a home online and then take a couple days to get a pre-qualification letter. It's too and then late. It's gone. Yeah. It's too late. So we don't want you to miss out on a property. And, and we also don't want you to fall in love with a home and then maybe you don't qualify. So it's good. You got to find out anyway if you're going to buy a home. So you might as well do that homework first. That's a very considerate way of approaching it. You know, like I think I feel like the way you're even talking about it is like the right way. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not just about we got to get this done so we can get this transaction done. It's like, right. hey, I just want I don't want you to be upset. Mm -hmm. You know, like let's set expectations. I, like my business partner told me, he said the two greatest words and he heard it from someone else. But he said the two greatest words in business are expectation management. Absolutely. And in this market, it's even more crucial than any other time I've been working in real estate. Yeah. You got to prepare them for what's out there so that they know how to compete. Yeah. Otherwise you're just going to get clobbered. So the first step is let's figure out the, like what you can buy. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the next step is I, th I, if, if I want to put words in your mouth, but I think you told me figure out where you want to live. So like what neighborhood, what side of town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause a lot of times, and I do a lot of relocation work mm -hmm. too. So they don't know the area, but they might see a really pretty home, pretty home in Valrico. Let's go to Odessa. How about Fishhawk? Oh, maybe Clearwater. And I'm like, yeah. whoa, <laughs> okay, yeah. that's a lot of driving. Uh, what kind of commute do you want to have? And let's yeah. talk in minutes, not miles, because we all know mm -hmm. that depending on where you're located can make a big difference. Right. Um, but we, we do a lot of neighborhood tours first before even looking at homes. Got it. Or we maybe set up what we call the sampler platter and we see one here and one here because I don't want to show you five homes in a neighborhood that you never would have considered. Yep. And I don't want to drive into the neighborhood and you say, oh, no. And then now I have five appointments with sellers that I've just asked to leave their houses. And so we always focus on the neighborhood first. Yeah. Doesn't matter what the home looks like if the neighborhood's not a right fit. That way, too, if we focus in on certain neighborhoods, we can get very aggressive in a small radius. Sure. We cast too wide of a net. Part of my job is also getting clarity in those decisions, these very big decisions that you have to make for you and your mm -hmm. family. And if you're casting too wide of a net, you're always going to have that FOMO mentality of, well, yeah, it's nice, but 
I just don't know what else might be out there. And you're not ready to make a decision. So when you say aggressive, you mean like very confident that when you're going in to like see a property or put an offer in that you're like, yes, like a hundred percent. This is what we want right now. This mm-hmm. is the place. Yep. Is that what you mean by aggressive? Full commitment. And you know, this is the neighborhood you want to be mm-hmm. in. The house fits all the criteria that you're looking for. And you feel confident in making that decision and being aggressive in your offer. So if you're wishy-washy or vacillating at all as a buyer, like it's really not, you're not ready. Right. Yep. It's a big decision. And Mm -hmm. if you're on the fence, you know, I always say, I'm not going to convince you to buy a house, but I am going to convince you to get off the fence. And you got to choose one way or the other, because in this market, you don't have time to just sit on the fence. If you sit on the fence, then your answer is you're not going for it. How do you tell people, how do you help people get off the fence? It's taking them through that path. Mm -hmm. to gain clarity. And that's starting with neighborhoods and going down the funnel of getting more and more specific and writing it down and saying, this is the criteria that we're working with, right? And then someone says, well, I have to live on a lake. And then they send me this home that's not on a lake. And I'll say, of course, you said you have to live on a lake. Why are we going to go and look at this home? Are we going to now expand the search back out? And so it's having those discussions because I think in this crazy world, you're thrown so many things at all these different angles and you're set up on all these searches that it can really cloud your mind and right. getting there's a lot of noise out there want right and and that is i think one of the biggest things that we do is bringing people down that funnel so that they're at the end of the funnel by the time we're ready to make offers and they are completely confident that yep when a home comes up in this neighborhood i want to go see it that day and if it fits the criteria yeah. when i walk in we're going for it yeah so uh, I mean, I think this gets to the root of like why you would even work with an agent, right? I mean, so like in my own personal buying experience that I'm going through right now, there were 11 offers for the property that we wanted and we were not a cash buyer. Like we needed financing, right? So how in the world do you even win that negotiation? Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know, you know, like I'm a marketing and advertising guy all day. Like I don't, I don't know anything about real estate, Mm -hmm. right? So if I didn't have an actual buying agent there with me to help me structure the contract, Mm -hmm. I I, I guarantee you I wouldn't have gotten the home that I wanted. A lot of it too is if we can, we find out a lot of information about the seller and what's important to them. Well, did we get into secret sauce zone here? I don't think this is, okay. you know, if, if, if you can find out what's important to a seller and hit on those high points, a tiebreaker, that's going to set you above the rest. If, if you're, you know, even keel, like I said, it's an emotional decision for a yeah. seller. Sometimes it is too. I sometimes have it's sellers that say, don't show me any of those letters that those people write. <laughs> but then I have some sellers that say, oh my gosh, I really want to make sure that this, this home goes to someone who. So we're allowed to write letters. You are allowed. I, we were going to, and we didn't write a letter. It, it depends. You know, some, yeah. you know, if you're, if it's an investor we knew on the, the other address. side, they don't want it. They don't want to hear your story. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. Like the interest rates are great. Like, yeah. can we please buy your property? Right, right. No, we were going to write a, uh, like a whole thing about raising our family and, mm-hmm. you know, in this home and everything. But we, we didn't know if that was breaking a rule. <laughs> it's not breaking a rule. If you go knock on their door. And okay. Do well, any- we weren't thinking about <laughs> that. that. <laughs> no. Yeah. So um, sometimes we do. It just, it depends on what we learn about the seller. Yeah. And if we think that it, it would be a benefit. Sometimes yeah. sometimes people are creeped out by letters. So we kind of gauge the situation when we're talking to the agent and figuring out, you know, do you want a quick close? Do mm-hmm. you want a close in a month and a lease back for a month or two if you haven't found your next place? So what they want in terms of the actual transaction, mm-hmm. but also like what they want for this home they've been living in. Mm-hmm. So yeah. there's the actual emotional side of it too. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause you know, sometimes these people have lived in this home and raised their kids and you know, maybe it was a family home. Yeah. Well, sometimes I don't mind giving away the secrets cause it's really hard to replicate them anyway. Right. All, I, I, to be honest with you, I, I love collaborating and coming up with new ideas yeah. and um, I wouldn't consider myself a super creative person, but I have had some amazing mentors that have helped me get to where I am that have collaborated and let me do the exact same things that they were doing. Because if we're working by referral, you know, a lot of the agents that I have mentored or taught can do the same exact thing. And I don't feel like they're a competitor. I learned it from mentors of mine 
replicated yeah. what they did over time, maybe put my own spin on it. But I, I do believe in collaborating because it brings us all up, rises all, yeah, I, all tides. I couldn't agree with you anymore. Like I, I, we've built our entire business based off referrals and, uh, and I think it's, it's more of like a way of living, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, when I, I want somebody to answer my phone call because they know that I'm probably calling them with something positive or something that might add to their life or whatever. And so, uh, you know, I, we try to conduct our business in an ethical way and like my own personal relationships with people. So that way people always know I have their best interests in mind. And I feel like that just multiplies referrals, mm -hmm. you know, and it seems like you guys, you do that just naturally, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's why I'm not, you know, afraid to, to share ideas because just like mm -hmm. you said, um, you know, most people aren't going to implement it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it, it, it's like, there's like this foundation you have to implement it from, right? And, and you've got that in you. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the entrepreneurial experience and, you know, how you even got into this business, right? And then, I, and then we can talk more about like what you're doing to grow it and expand it even more, right? So what was that, what was that moment when you decided to become an entrepreneur? Like, how did that even happen? Well, it, I, I would say it wasn't some glorious moment that maybe everyone imagines, but it was more of a, I would call it a smack in the face. <laughs> but I was um, working at a large insurance firm for mm. many years and, you know, had a career I was building and yeah. I had family in the insurance industry. The old corporate. Yep. 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 And, um, and I had a great job. I'm still great friends with my boss. And um, so I was, it was probably February eight years ago. And I was at dinner with my boyfriend at the time. Now my husband and Mr. St. Cyr, Mr. St. Cyr, Jeff. Mm -hmm. And, um, he was asking me, he, he said, Oh, you like your, you like your job? And I was like, yeah, yeah, it's great. It's great. And he was like, but are you really happy? Oh God, I hate that question. And I just started crying. It was so embarrassing. And I, it, you know how sometimes someone asks you a question and you're yeah. just like not prepared for it. And I, it was this very weird and embarrassing emotional reaction to the question. And I think that, you know, in that moment, I really realized that I really liked the people that I was working with. Yeah. I was in my absolute comfort zone, just moving up. What's the next step, the next step, the next step. And I really didn't have my sights open to what makes me happy. And am I really utilizing my talents? And so he obviously knew the answer to that question without me saying anything. And he said, you know, I think you'd be really great at real estate. Yeah. And his parents were in real estate in Naples. And not a bad town to be in real estate. Oh, I know, right. Yeah. <laughs> the welfare is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, but I, I remember saying to him, that is the most stupid idea I've ever heard in my life. I could never work on commission. I don't have the stomach for it. I've never started a business. I've never owned a home. I know nothing about real estate. Um, and so I just kind of poo-pooed the idea, but he kept saying, I really think that, you know, this would be a good place for you. So two weeks later, um, I get noticed that my job is being eliminated along with 40 other of my peers at the insurance company. And I thought, Oh crap, <laughs> what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And, um, you know, was looking for jobs in other insurance companies. And, um, I think it was the perfect opportunity and I'm really happy that I had it so young in yeah. life. I was in my mid twenties and instead of just hopping back into another insurance job that obviously didn't fulfill me, I really thought about what do I really want to do and what motivates me? And a mentor of mine had talked to me about real estate, but, um, you know, kind of was a little scared for me just given my lack of experience. And even my dad said, when I um, told him I'm thinking about getting into real estate, his uh, initial reaction, which is kind of funny. He thought, Oh no, she's moving back in. Oh man. <laughs> Cause it's hard. It's a really hard business, yeah. but you know, there's said, a lot of real estate people out there. A lot of oh, yeah. people. And even it's more a great, in a good market. Uh, yeah. A lot of, I mean, yeah. It seems like it's the most popular side hustle. Yeah. There's a lot of jokes made about yeah. realtors. I think even like family guy said, um, 
like the glorified hobby of the stay-at-home mom or something like that. So they say terrible things about realtors, but it's okay. I think it's pretty funny. But um, but yeah, so I you know decided I have what have, what do I have to lose? You have nothing to lose. I have nothing. I have no kids. Right. No spouse. It's perfect just timing. Me. And so I might as well try something a little more risky and see how it goes. You know, see what I'm made of. And um, the first year was pretty rough. <laughs> I made five thousand um, dollars. And but then I got a great mentor. Um, Gail Bernuka, she's a wonderful mentor of mine and um, still is. And she taught me how to work by referral. Wow. And so teach us, how do we do it? Yeah, that's the only reason I am still in this business. Mm -hmm. And it's all about building relationships, being that trusted advisor for someone, you know, not only for one transaction, but for all of the transactions and referrals to come. Because you're not just doing the transaction for that one person, you're building trust so that they want to tell all of their friends and scream on the mountaintops of what a great experience they had. And she was wonderful in putting me on that track that I really attribute where I am today because of, of all that she taught me. I think it's a very important perspective. And I think that it shows up, like, for example, in the videos you make, right? I mean, you could just shoot the property, but you don't, you don't do that. You know, mm -hmm. you're telling... You're, you're creating a piece that's going to live beyond even like what you're doing in your particular transaction. But mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur, you have a fantastic vision. Like you're not just growing like with more agents. And, and I think you have how many agents now? Like 40, we 50? We have a total of 50. So we have 50? Re referral agents. Then we have about 35 uh, full-time active agents. Right. So, so you've got a place for full-time agents. You've got a place for part-time agents. You've got all those other aspects of your business. Like, like you were just saying that you didn't feel like you had enough courage to start your own business. And now you have so much courage. You're starting micro businesses within your business that touch every single part of the transaction. Mm -hmm. It's like you're creating a membership organization. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's ex exactly the key. I think, you know, once if you are able to gain that status with someone of being their trusted advisor, right. I, I want to be that holy Full service. Full service. Like, and, and right now we've expanded it to title mm -hmm. and now just starting insurance and then bringing yeah. in mortgage. And how far can this go? Are you offering you know? travelers insurance? Well, I didn't mention that. <laughs> <laughs> they are a great company. I mean, we all know that industries can, you know, yeah. flow up and down. So yeah. I have no hard feelings. Uh, I honestly think that it was the best push out of the nest man. that I needed. And I still have great friends that are a part of the organization. So no yeah. hard feelings, you know, yeah. you never know where your path is yeah. going to take you. And, and so I interrupted you, you were talking about like building out all the whole thing, sure. right? Yeah. So you've and got then, insurance. Yeah. And so, and you know, I, as I mentioned, I started this company with both of my parents and mm -hmm. my dad being the previous CEO of AAA wow. that was a membership organization. And what I love about that concept is it's all about creating value for our clients. Some things, it's not just about profit. It's becoming that hub right. where your clients come to because they know the kind of service that they're going to expect from you and they can trust you. They yeah. know that whatever we're providing is truly going to be an honest business. Well, that whole business that your dad was a part of, I remember going to the AAA office in Augusta, Georgia with my mm -hmm. grandparents mm -hmm. and we would go to go get these free triptychs. Right. You know, and it wasn't, they made no money off of that, but it was about that customer service and that experience of like somebody walking through the little maps with you and mm -hmm. showing you like, you know, this is a great place to maybe take a break or, you know, right. to you spend the night here and then continue on your trip and you're going to, you know, it's going to be a great experience. And mm -hmm. they would just, it's like they truly cared and about your experience. Right. And uh, I mean, talking about two great mentors, your mom and your dad. Yeah. Right. I, it, it's been, it's been really cool learning who my parents are, not as my parents, because it's a completely different relationship. And not to say we haven't had our ups and downs in owning a business together and starting this business, but I've gained a whole new respect for who they are as leaders in the community. Right. And, you know, I think one of the funny things is I thought, you know, working with my dad, you know, he's old, old corporate guy, he's going to be super conservative and I'm the young buck and I'm going to be wanting to take all these risks. And it is the complete opposite. He like scares the heck out of me sometimes, his ideas that he wants to pursue. And, uh, but it's a really great 
balance in that, yeah. you know, we have between the two of us. And then my mom, she's amazing at building culture. You know, I used to be so embarrassed. Anywhere we would go, everyone knew Holly. I couldn't go to the grocery store. I couldn't go, <laughs> oh my God, I'd be like, oh my gosh, my mom's <laughs> talking to them again. And But they knew her by name and now I understand the value of those connections. You know that's going to be you one day, right? I know. I'm seeing, okay. you know, people call me little Holly sometimes. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, but And people know that yeah. my mom by my smile. Even though I have a different last name, they'll say, are you related to Holly? Yeah. So it's really weird, but <laughs> it's it's cool. Yeah. But, um, but just seeing them in a completely different light has been a, a really awesome experience that I feel like most people don't get to know their parents in that. And, and you come from a family where, I mean, obviously as a CEO, you have to be entrepreneurial. Your mother owned her own business. She was an mm-hmm. entrepreneur, right? So, mm-hmm. I mean, in my own, my life, my grandfather was an entrepreneur. And I remember hanging out with my grandfather in the summertime when I didn't have a camp to go to or whatnot, or, and mm-hmm. I was like too young to do anything. So I would just have to be put somewhere. Yeah. So I would ride along with my grandfather and he'd talk about his business and he'd talk about his challenges with his staff or his teammates or like Mm -hmm. trying to make a sale or like trying to do something new in his business. And it just sort of like by osmosis, you can pick up a lot of those lessons of leadership, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just being, I think also being pushed into uncomfortable situations. Yeah. Remember when I was like 12 years old, my mom used to make me answer the phones at her office and, oh my God, what do I say? What if they ask me a question, you know, but just pushing you into those uncomfortable situations, I think is, is a, invaluable thing that my parents did for me. Yeah, I, I would, yeah, that is, that is really cool. And that's great that they did that for you. Mm-hmm. So what's next for, for your agency and for your business? So right now we're launching insurance, as mm-hmm. I had mentioned. Um, and then, I, you know, either looking for a good partner mm-hmm. to start a joint venture for maybe doing some mortgage or, or maybe starting off on our own. I would say that's mm-hmm. our, our next stop. And then, I, you know, I really think the sky's the limit. There's so many aspects of home ownership, home buying and right. selling that we could add additional value for our, you know, quote unquote members, if you yeah. will, um, that we are open to more opportunities to be able to serve our clients. Well, how do you tackle? So, I mean, a lot of the people that listen to this show, you know, they may be entrepreneurs, they may have different responsibilities at their jobs. And it seems like you have lots of facets to even like something that like from my perspective might seem kind of spe- like like singular, right? So like I'm in the process of buying a home. I already have my insurance agent. I already have a couple of things, but I'm getting emails from your organization saying like, hey, here's this marketplace where you can check out like like the best value on insurance or here's, here's a moving company, mm-hmm. right? And so how do you approach adding a bolting on a new piece to your business? Because it seems like, you do it pretty well. Mm -hmm. It's like I said, finding a partner that has the same service standards. Okay. Without that, it's just never going to fit in well, and it's not going to be successful. I would say, you know, we had some growing pains too. Mm -hmm. and It wasn't all, you know, unicorns and rainbows starting a, a title company, but we worked through it and we learned so much. And, and then, you know, with our next joint venture for title, we knew exactly what we needed. And so then moving on to other ancillary services of the brokerage, mm-hmm. we learn more and more about what the right fit is and culture. If I've learned anything throughout, yeah. you know, these five years in owning a company is key over almost anything. So you tell me about culture. Skills. How do you, how do you know if someone's got the right culture? Like, how do you know if somebody's got the right culture for you? Um, we have an extensive interview process. Mm-hmm. Um, we look at their social media. What are they portraying to the world? Um, sure. What uh, type of content they're putting out there? Are they a positive and collaborative person? Um, and then we, you know, we have not only the recruiting staff meet with them, but I many times or one of our owners will meet with them to see if they're the right fit. And so it's it's quite extensive to see if it's it's going to be a good fit. Are they interested in the training piece in developing themselves? Mm-hmm. Are they interested in collaborating on ninja training, which is a, sure. a group that we have? Um, and, and do they show interest in those things? Or are they just saying, what's the commission split? Because if you are only here to gain 
a higher commission split, you're going to come here for the commission split and then you're going to leave for the commission split. Right. And you're not going to stick around for the long term. We know that the training, the collaborative right. piece is going to catapult you even further than if we just gave you more money and no resources. This is about the long term building a business. And so we know, are you in it to be right. an entrepreneur? Do you have what it takes? Do you have the disciplines? Because we are not going to spend our resources on someone who's not going to That's implement right. them. They're just going to go to all the trainings and implement nothing. It's a waste of time. Yeah, well, that's that's wonderful advice. So speaking of, uh, you know, the impact that you're making and the, the what you're how you're changing people's lives with, you know, working in your organization, like you, you you're making a big difference in some local organizations. I think you're really involved in Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Very involved with them. Yeah. We've, um, we've had little Mikey for about six years now and, um, he's just, I mean, he's been the light of our lives. We, we've learned so much from him and gotten to love his family and, um, take him on new adventures. But yeah. we've also, you know, he helps ground us too. Anytime that we're with him, I, I had mentioned to you that we used to plan these big elaborate days and, oh, we're going to go to bush gardens and we're going to, and all he wants to do is throw the football or ride his bike, which Jeff taught him how to ride a bike. You know, it's the simple things that he wants to do. And, and the other day he was at our house and, and I actually called his mom because I was just like, I was going to cry over something so silly. But, um, you know, he's, he's 12 years old and he was in the kitchen and I was making him some dinner and he was there and his brother was there with him. And and I see him looking around and, you know, he's usually looking around. He's always wanted to eat something as a 12 year old. Sure. And he looks at the trash can that, of course, is heaping over um, and needs to be taken out. And he walks over and he shoves it all in there and he just walks out the door and takes the trash out. And I was like this 12 year old just taking the initiative to help out. I was just floored. I just think he's turning out to be such a, a wonderful kid. And we love having him around because he's not just looking for us to do things for him, you know, he's contributing back. And, you know, that just that shows, I think that, you know, obviously his mom is doing an amazing job with her four kids, but I think that we're really having an impact too. That's phenomenal. Yeah. And how do you, uh, how did you pick that organization? My husband and I wanted to do something together yeah. where we really could directly feel the impact of our time. Um, you know, I've done a lot of volunteering and a lot of it's like done in a day type of projects. But I wanted to to be involved in something that I could see build. And we decided on on doing this together. So we're actually a big couple. And um, so we interviewed, it was quite an extensive process and they did such a great job of matching the personality with you know Jeff and I who are very active and like to yeah. be outside with Mikey who is very much the same. And so I remember the first time that we went over to Mikey's house he immediately goes and he just sits like next to Jeff. He like couldn't get any closer. He was six years old. And um, I could just tell like, this is gonna, this is gonna be really, really cool. And just, you know, seeing him grow into almost a teenager now in December has been a pretty awesome experience. So I think they do a, a fantastic job at the matching piece. Cause yeah. that, you know, you're only required to do about a year and a half but once you have that right connection, like we're there for life, you know? Yeah, for sure. That sounds yeah. amazing. Like he's going to be there forever with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. He's part of the family. That's great. Well, I thank you for being on the show. Where are some places that people can follow what you're up to and your thought leadership and just see what you're up to? Sure. We do a lot on, on social media. Mm -hmm. So Allie sells Tampa Bay, of course, on Facebook and then um, we're on Instagram as well. I have a YouTube channel and TomlinSaintsHere.com is our amazing website. That's awesome. Well, this episode was not sponsored by you. I just yeah. want to make sure that's clear, yeah. everybody. So <laughs> it was not sponsored. I personally enjoyed working with you. Like it was a yeah. very pleasurable experience on the on the buying and selling side. And your dad is the one who referred me to you, by yep. the way. So yep. thank you, Pops. Yep. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, no, it's, it's been great. And I really appreciate your advice today. I think um, I really like what you're doing and I think you're going to be successful no matter, no matter what, you know, it yeah. seems like you're, you're coming at it from the right place and uh, um, you know, uh, it's just going to be a lot of fun watching you grow and, and be successful in the community. Um, yeah. So 
uh, follow you on your website and follow you on your YouTube channel. I know you've got a great YouTube channel putting a lot of content out there. Mm-hmm. Right. Are you going to be starting one of these podcasts here soon? Well, I, I used to have my little show, um, The Real House Lives of Tampa Bay, which I've been asked if yeah. I'm going to start it up again. So I, you're inspiring me to get back in yeah. there. It's not that bad. <laughs> no, no, it's a lot of fun. It really yeah. is a lot of fun. It just takes time. Exactly. Planning. Well, thank you. I hope people follow that show and I hope everyone here follows our show, The Law of Relevancy podcast. You can find us anywhere where podcasts are found. Uh, That's Apple, Spotify, all of those different places, as well as our website at thelawofrelevancy.com. Thank you again for joining us, and we hope to see you next time.